Hello everybody and welcome to this tech help video. Um, today we're going to be looking at the brand new version of Android Auto. So it's definitely a nice thing. Uh, this is the first redesign since it uh, came out back about four or five years ago actually. So this is a big change um, and hopefully we're going to see some of the things that we had issues with addressed. So we'll go ahead and dig into all the different changes. So we'll go ahead and launch into the system here. Of course, you do get into it the same way as you always have. Um, and you'll notice that it launched straight into Google Maps. Now that's actually one of the new features of the system. It's called Auto Launch. Basically, uh, Google system is, uh, it knows what type of apps you typically use in the car. Uh, and the emphasis is in the car. It actually is not even thinking about the apps that you use on your phone normally. It's thinking about the apps you use in your car frequently. So Google Maps, of course, would be a frequent use for my phone as well as most people. So it launched straight onto the Google Maps display with our music down at the bottom. Um, they're also keen to point out that the music starts automatically. And as you can see, it is playing right now. It just switched to a different song. But both those things basically happen simultaneously and it knows what type of app is uh, the last app that you used in your vehicle. Now of course what I'll start out with here is basically the most obvious thing and that's the new visuals. Um, this is totally redesigned. It looks nothing like it used to. Um, so one of the main things they've done is gone to a muted color scheme. Uh, we now have a dark black and gray kind of look with little splashes of color in the app but the actual backgrounds and stuff are all black. Um, previously, we had kind of like a really white and blue, really colorful interface. Um, you know, whether or not what you prefer, I don't know. But um, what they, they did do this because in most cars, including this car, usually the surrounds of the infotainment screen are black as well as most of the interior. And it, this just kind of integrates it in, makes it look like it's more built in. Um, it's a little easier on the eye. Now, of course, as far as this home screen, uh, you will notice that it looks nothing like it did before. Um, what we've now gone to here is basically a list view of your apps, um, kind of like Apple CarPlay does, as a matter of fact. Um, so now it's not just a random list. There is some context to it. Um, so this little bar here, this symbolizes your recently used apps. So what's above it are your most recently used apps. So in the top left corner here it's going to be your most recently used navigation app the next two will be your most recently used music apps or media apps and then the next one will be your phone app underneath that you have all the rest of your apps of course you can just scroll between them um, you know one of the things that android auto is best at is having a massive amount of app support more so than apple carplay so you still have all the random things like um, uh, like what we showed off in one of our previous Android Auto videos, like the scanner radio, where you can listen to like police scanners. Just kind of interesting things. You still have all that stuff available on Android Auto. So the little dot there, that's the home screen. And you can tap that kind of two times, so it's a multitasking button basically. Now one thing you might be noticing is missing. Uh, we no longer have any cards, so we don't have like the little predictive cards that pop up. To kind of tell you like do you want to navigate home uh, i think you're about to go to this calendar event do you want to do that no those are no longer there but what we do have is these google assistant apps and these are uh, noted here by having the little assistant emblem over top of them so what happens is instead of me launching google assistant asking it a question um, this basically already does that for you so when you click on it it's going to read you um, some of the information uh, that you could have requested via the Google Assistant. Here's the latest news. By the way, you can control the news by saying skip or stop the news. From Reuters TV US at 6.52 p.m. today. From Reuters TV. So as you can see, this is a pretty interesting thing to have today's no top stories playing here on the news. Um, I still have these navigation buttons down at the bottom, so I can skip for 10 seconds, play it, skip to another news story. I mean, these are very interesting things that apparently, you know, it probably could previously do, but you'd have to know a specific way to launch it with a phrase or whatnot. Um, and now you just have this available. There's a similar one down here for weather, so you can just tap the weather and go ahead and read you what's going on without you having to ask it. Right now in Lexington, it's 85 and mostly sunny. 
The forecast tonight is 75 and partly cloudy. So right now we just got a text message. Uh, I do have the option to play the text message and listen to it. Mason says, You can also hey, mute the conversation you if reply? you're not interested. Yes. Sorry, reply, repeat it, or is that it for now? Reply. What's the message? Hello there. Here's your text to Mason. Hello there. Do you want to send it or change it? Send it. Okay. Message sent. And one of the other big changes with this Android Auto system is that we now basically have a notification shade. Um, so you just hit this little bell right here, and this will bring you to your recent notifications. Now this is nice, of course, because uh, you can't always respond right at that moment as soon as you get like a message, for instance. So if you were like navigating previously, you got a message, um, then it disappears, and then I'm left with having to go into the phone section, go find the, you know, try to track down where the message is. That's dangerous. Now I can just conveniently head right here to the notification, see, okay, someone's texted me, um, you know, a couple minutes ago. Now I'm ready to get back around to that, so now I can click on it and go through the whole responding Mason process says, and whatnot. Hey, and it is nice, at least while we're in park here, um, it is written out visually so you can actually read the text. You don't have to click on it and listen to it. Um, you can just look at it. Now we'll go ahead and jump into some of the finer details of the system here. So those are kind of the main changes. Um, but of course we do have Google Maps as well as all of our other navigation applications. Um, so this does work the same as it always has. It can be three dimensional. Uh, we do have the satellite maps enabled and you do have pinch to zoom as well. Now some of the nice things, you can click on that um, and you'll be able to find uh, your recently used locations as well as um, some predictions where you might want to go. You've got categories um, as well as personal things that you may have saved um, as places you like to go. So the purpose of demonstration here, we will uh, find a gas station. All right. So I'm going to go here. Of course, you can call them as usual or click that button there to navigate. Head you will notice that, um, toward Ralph Lane. you know, using the power of Google Maps, we even have like things like the fuel price, you know, cause, um, so there's a lot of power built into that with the traffic and ways and whatnot. Now, one of the other biggest features is this new adaptive taskbar down here at the bottom. Um, so basically what it does is it has contextual information about the app that you're not currently on. So more or less you can basically bounce back and forth between the navigation and your audio. So right now we've got, I turned on some music here that we have playing. So when we're on the music, we have our navigation down here. So this is telling me my next turn, you know, straight, this is where I'm heading, stuff like that. I can click that and I'll shoot back to my navigation. Well, now this down here at the bottom has now changed to my audio information. So now I have the, all the options here to play, pause, and skip the song straight from right there. And then I can click that and I'll be back into my music. So basically it's kind of a multitasking. Uh, it's kind of like uh, in Android, your most recent app where you can kind of double tap and quickly switch into that app that you were just on and go back and forth really, really fast. Certainly a nice feature um, and keeps things from being very distracting. Otherwise, most of the features here are pretty much the same. You're just going to notice, uh, again, different graphics, different fonts. Things are easier on the eyes. Things are laid out a little differently. Um, so you still have things like your favorites, your contacts. Um, you do have the option to search by letter. I don't think that was available before. Um, so we can hit like S. We'll go straight to this part. You can you know, click on any of these things and quickly go into them very easily. The music is very similar. You have upgraded graphics. Um, as you can see, it's actually a very nice look. Um, we don't have a very fancy um, uh, graphic here because of the song, but um, you do have basically kind of faded out in the background as well as up here the art, uh, or the artist art, um, and then you have the little thing that shows you your status around the pause button. You can also kind of minimize what's now playing, and you got the little graphic here so you can go quickly 
now playing and back to searching four different things on whatever type of function you're using, whether it be Spotify or Google Play Music or whatnot. Now I did just click the settings. Um, interestingly enough, I don't know if it's just because this is a uh, new version, it's not even fully rolled out yet, um, but when I hit the settings, it just opens it up on my phone. It says, check your phone. Um, but you do have different settings. Um, you can use OK Google detection, so you can just say those words without pressing any buttons. It'll go ahead and pick that up as you just saw right there. Um, you can actually toggle back to the old version for now. Um, you can also lock the phone while you're driving or allow it to be able to continue using other applications while also using Android Auto on the system. So if you want to hand your phone off to a passenger or something like that, you do have the ability to do that. But anyways, that's pretty much all that I want to cover with the all-new Android Auto system. As you can tell, it's totally a ground-up redesign. Um, very different, and uh, it has a lot of new and very useful features to make things safer, as well as a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Um, definitely stay tuned uh, for a future video where we'll be comparing Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, since they're both happen to be all new in the same year so that definitely warrants a revisit of our previous video uh, to see which one is the superior system now that they're totally different again but anyways thanks for joining us and see you next time